Let's see. Let's let's try not to have super squeaky chair day again. That was yesterday. Oh, hello. Yes, this is I, the one, the only, a hobo Tom as I get things ready. And I'm in my hobo chair. There goes my hobo kitty cat. She knows what happens when I get on this. Sometimes she she tries to get on this YouTube show with me, and she does not like that too much. Yet yeah, I'm here on YouTube. I'm here to discuss one thing and one thing only tonight. I'm going to try and make this fairly quick. Wow. Only 10-something. 1020, that's cool. I can get this done and get some sleep. Yes. Tomorrow's my late too. Tomorrow I have a lot of stuff to do though. Meetings, water samples to collect, chocolates to buy for one. Oh wait. That's that's another thing. Let's talk about some SmackDown tonight. So it starts off, um Randy Orton comes out, cuts a promo. Kind of a recap of what happened between him and Kofi Kingston. Uh, Kofi Kingston come out, come out, the revival go up. They they, they try to make the save. Not very successful at that. And there's a Roman Reigns recap about all the stuff that's been going on. Then a big announcement: NXT, 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 NXT is coming to USA live, or somewhat live, I think. My question about that is if they're going to leave full sale and if they're going to do tours like Ron Smackdown do, if they would ever come to the Ocean Center here in Daytona Beach, turn the Ocean Center Daytona Beach on September 6th. Ooh, ooh September 6th, 7th, and 8th. Give me the boat show. Be there. Even though I don't think I could afford thingy, I still like to oogle Ooh, dual shifters. I like to just see the boats though, and not oogle like this. But that's that's creepy. But yeah, dual shift. Yes. Um. So NXT is coming to USA. So that means. Wow, might be covering a lot of wrestling. Might have to add a day. Whoa, whoa. Yeah, I might have to add a day. So it'd be Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Wednesday. I've off Thursdays. Fridays Impact. Saturdays. For the most of most of the time I have off and Sundays. Oh wow. I'm gonna get fairly regular with this. That'll be interesting. The logistics are intriguing. Oh, let's get the wrestling. So all of a sudden we start off with a King of the Ring qualifying match. We have Andrade versus Apollo Cruz. All of the rest I'm gonna say this tonight was excellent. With the exception of the last show. I have no idea who actually were the producers or the bookers. The wrestling was top notch, though. That was the best. That was one of that was some of the best that I've seen in a long time. The other segments in between, with the exception of the Roman Reigns, because that was just interesting. Or uh, uh, you can yawn through. Yep. <laughs> So I'm kind of probably tired now. But Andrade versus Apollo Crews was amazing. Wow, Apollo Crews hit that opening clothesline. Wow. And I'll tell you what, he went for the quick pin. That started off a really fun match. Andrade comes running back for the knees. Again, tries his own quick pin. Smart. You don't want to prolong this. The longer you're doing this, the more likelihood you are of getting injured. Right? Uh, again, some quick pin attempts. Again, it was a roll-up from from the attempted hammerlock DDT. The hanging arm bar, which always looks amazing. Uh, the the drop back. The drop kick in the air. Still a sign of beauty. So good, though. Especially during the break, you see the picture-in-picture. 
the live audience really got treated to a really good show. There were good false finishes. Eventually, Andrade did a ha did get in the Hammerlock DDT. Very protected and probably one of the strongest finishers in all of WWE right now. Andrade gets the win. King Andrade and Queen Vega. No, that doesn't quite roll off the tongue. But Andrade picks up a win in a surf and turf quality match. Uh, Daniel Bryan and Rowan find someone in the hood, bring him to a room. Is that even legal? Uh, for interrogation. We'll see what happens. Elias then finds the ref who's hiding in plain sight. Just says, where is he? Ref goes, he's in there. Pulls Drake Maverick out of a sound chest or something. Whatever, moving... I don't know what they're called. I'll just call them big, big boxes. Now, uh, Drake Maverick's there. And he has a piece of paper. I think there's no 24 7 match tonight because he has his own match. That won't make sense. <sighs> Drake Maverick gets shoved back in the box. Then there was a moment of bliss with, with Charlotte. And, oh, wow. Charlotte got that on the mic. I don't know if she's picked up Ric Flairitis. Where? You know what Ric Flairitis is. Ever since she's been hanging out with Andrade, she seemed a little too tranquilo. And Bailey comes out and shoves her off the chair. And now... Alexa Bliss is becoming... Dropping beneath Buddy Murphy. As far as popularity goes. Indeed. Now, for a long time, when Buddy Murphy was a heel in NXT, people used to shout, Hey, your girlfriend's more famous than you are. Now I can say that Blake shouldn't yell at those kids. Your former partner, Buddy Murphy, is more famous than you. Blake and Murphy back in the day with Alexa Bliss as their valet. Oh, wow, that's right. They did have valet. Who would know about that? This guy, Hobo Tom. And then it was Daniel Bryan versus Buddy Murphy, and wow, this was an amazing match. Um, it was a hard-hitting, striking match, and we learned that Australians can fly. They can fly pretty well here in the Northern Hemisphere. He was jumping all over the place. Uh, the Meteora from Down Under, as, as as he should call it, but as I call it, uh, did the flying press, uh, like, oh, the uh, uh, suicide flip, whatever, suicide topo I don't, I don't know. He just jumps over top rope and lands on top of Daniel Bryant. Hit the Meteora, and it's like, whoa. Well, I want to know, who was the last person actually to tap or to give up, do the label lock. That's becoming a glorified rest hold. That's not good. Uh, he still transition into the rings of Saturn for a little bit. Gives us some legitimate seat. And back to the label lock. Uh, Daniel Bryan's really good at talking. Stay down. Stay down. Obviously, Buddy Murphy did not. Do that. Uh, he, he kicked out from oh the belly to back suplex superplex from the top rope. That was pretty impressive. Uh, Murphy did hit Murphy's Law. Whoa, Buddy Murphy won. He pinned Daniel Bryan in a surf and turf match. Let's go, buddy. Let's go, buddy. Uh, 
Then Buddy gets jumped at the end by Daniel Bryan and Rowan. Liar! Liar! You're fickle! Fickle! Uh, eventually, he does get confronted by Roman Reigns, too, somewhere. Oh, that was really in the show. Uh, then the Revival show up. They take on Heavy Machinery. The Bear Hug came back! Yes! The Bear Hug! I like my old school moves. Um, amazing suplex spot. They, like, had um, one of the Revival up in a double suplex position. The other guy, uh, Dawson, was up in the suplex position. Dash came in. Otis let go, put him up in the in the standard in the, in the um, delayed suplex. That was amazing. One, two. I don't know. I guess I was down to like let go, or or to, to get hooked up. Uh, revival during the break didn't make their comeback. Um, that was an amazing standing flapjack. They're doing a lot of just standing moves where it's like I'm just gonna pick you up and toss you, and it's up to you, I guess, if you want to go go flat down or Go for like a back body drop, like Ricochet did. Except for this looked a lot smoother though. Uh, the airplane spin again. Whenever there is a classic wrestling move, I will always mark out for it. The slam, the caterpillar. However, there is a weird kind of roll up on heavy machinery. Again, uh, the revival is really good at doing the blind tags. A uh, lot of misdirection by the revival again. Classic tag team misdirection. Classic tag team wrestling. It's always good with me. This is another surf and turf match. There are only four matches, but they're actually letting these matches breathe. They're letting the matches develop. I want to say... Geez, I want to say they were all about 15 minutes long. I mean, somewhere to that 12 to 20 minute mark, with the exception of, of the last match. Kind of drag on a little bit too much. But I'll get to that next. Uh, then you have uh, Chad Gable is giving a promo. Shelton Benjamin looks outside the door, puts up a sign, says, You have to be this this high to enter the King of the Ring. Bravo, Shelton Benjamin. That was some good stuff. Then it was Ms. TV with Sami Zayn, and Sami Zayn is now speaking for Shinsuke Nakamura. Is this going to lead to a new program between The Miz and Shinsuke? Hopefully it does, because The Miz really did make that IC belt look really good. This is the first time I think we've seen the IC belt. Wow. Since the July pay-per-view, whatever that was. Yeah, it hasn't been that long. Whoa. Uh, then there was there's a tease of the reveal. And then um, Shane and KO. Shane's going to rescind that if KO shows that he's been rehabilitated from hitting officials. Then let's lead us to the next match of Elias versus Kevin Owens. And I never knew Elias had his own theme music. I was like, just start out. He just walked in, playing a guitar, sat down. And the light shone on him, and that was his entrance. No, he actually does have his own entrance music. And own Titantron. Who'd know? Uh, it was a, uh, again, it was coming it was, it was a good standard match. Uh, they did some good, fun stuff out of the ring. This just seemed long. Again, a lot of rest holds. Elias is becoming the master of that chin lock. Good for you, I guess? I don't know, whatever. Uh, Shane then shows up. Kevin Owens hits the frog splash. Fly, KO, fly. However, for uh, and then uh, at some time, Elias had him in the electric chair powerbomb. He had him up in the electric chair position, spun around, powerbomb. Still an amazing looking move. Don't know how that's not a finish, but the powerbomb's not really a finisher unless you do weird stuff to it, I guess. You power bomb two people together in the super collider, or power bomb one guy onto the other. I guess. Um, Kevin Owens went for a senton. Elias to get the knees up again. Shane McMahon shows up. He starts. He Kevin Owens obviously shows his frustration dealing with 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 Shane McMahon. 
Shane starts doing the, the 10 count. One, two, I will count you out. Three. Uh, he tells the referee, go back. I'm going to take control of this match. We have a quick three count with a roll up. Yeah, that was the three count by me. That was probably better, maybe. That last one always disappears. But that was it. And then we got to the big final reveal. And it's this guy who looks like Eric Rowan. It's like, wait a second. First of all, I have no clue who he is. Second of all, I'm like, he has that big orange beard. He has just like a light patch of hair on the side of his head. Like the kind I'm going to have this Friday when I finally get my hair cut again. And it's just like, maybe Buddy Murphy wasn't wrong. You saw someone that definitely looked like Rowan. I think even Rowan looked at him funny. It's like, why well, do you have my beard? Roman Reigns is like, huh? Who are you? No one knows who it is. It'll be interesting to see who it is. I guess next week his, his true identity is going to be revealed. Because, oh, um, that match, by the way, Kevin Owens, Elias match, King Elias does not sound good. It was a ham. Wow, that was SmackDown. Again, the wrestling itself was really good. Everything else... Eh, kind of so-so. So I'd like to thank everyone for watching. This has been a pretty quick show. I do have some stuff to do to get this do the video editing. But overall, this SmackDown, it was a good cheeseburger SmackDown. Again, they're not putting out a bad product. I'd like to thank everyone for watching. Please like, share, comment, subscribe. Um, I think my next show is going to be Friday. Red Wine and Pizza Friday Impact Wrestling. And this guy, Hobo Tom. Uh, Saturday, actually, just there's nothing much to do. I don't think there is anything Saturday. Nothing Sunday. Monday Raw, Tuesday SmackDown. Next week's going to be interesting. Monday Raw, Tuesday SmackDown, Thursday Prediction, Friday Impact, Saturday, Saturday, Saturday! I think it's going to be like seven hours of wrestling starting at 2 o'clock because they have NXT TakeOver Cardiff or NXT Cardiff, whatever that is. That's from 2 to 6. I have to go to the gym early that day. And then... 7 to 9.30 is AEW All Out, I think. I forget what it's called. I just know AEW. Yeah, All Out. And then next week, again, it's another kind of busy week. Because Monday is going to be a double feature. It's going to be the return of the Daytona Beach Bump Fight League. And I have to make a card for that. Along with Monday Night Raw, Tuesday SmackDown. And then just a normal Friday Impact. So still a lot of wrestling to watch and talk about. I'll see everyone later. It's time to go hobo. Bye.